Welcome back, everybody. We are in a 1930s house in West University space. Space. Place. Place. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> West, West University place. And if you don't know much about home inspecting, this would be the perfect video for training because I think we're going to find everything. Yeah, it's uh, what we call a target rich environment. Uh, <laughs> it's a 1930s home. It is on a pier and beam, so we're going to have a crawl space here. Um, it does have an older pool as well. They've also converted the attic over into a living space, so there's going to be some wall units and some a little bit extra stuff there as well. Yeah, we have like four HVAC units. Yeah. Some, some add-ons, so who knows what we're going to find. Just follow us along. Let's go check it out. Starting in the kitchen area, I already noticed that we have a grate here, and I thought it was some sort of an exhaust fan or return, but it's not. I can see the galvanized plumbing, and it's already corroded through and we have some sag a sagging ceiling with rust stains. So um, we already have some just galvanized plumbing that's failing in this area. So that's a, that's a, good, that's a good first find. Uh, so we got ourselves a couple water stains right here and then actually directly below the floor. Um, underneath it, we have some discoloration of the wood floor. So this is something that's going to have been ongoing for a little bit now. So once we make our way upstairs or out in the exterior, we're gonna take a look at this um, area from the other vantage point to see what may be the cause of that. I don't know if the video is gonna show this very well, but you can see that the uh, floor is really sloped in this area. So whenever we're crawling in the crawl space, we're gonna need to check this out over here. We probably have some sort of plumbing leak in this location. Uh, probably drainage. You got the you got the dishwasher here too, so this could be leaking and rotting out the floor. So when we're crawling, we really got to focus in this area. And you got there oh. microbial growth. Should I touch it? <laughs> I'm pretty allergic to mold, so um, and you know we can't confirm whether or not this actually is mold, but um, there are things that throw red flags to us that cause us to report as mold-like substance in our report. So um, we'll point out areas like this. Now, um, right around the corner from us right here is actually the stairway up to the converted attic space. And that is being cooled by window units. So it's not gonna be running all the time. And this door is being left open. So there's a very warm draft of air. When you walk from this end of the hallway to this one, you feel a pretty dramatic temperature difference. So. Um, that could be something feeding anything that's happening here if there's any moisture coming Getting a through. lot of humidity yeah and build up so get some mold growth and as inspectors we don't write it up as mold it is called a microbial like substance so not just in the kitchen area we also noticed that we had galvanized plumbing behind the toilets the sinks and all the other plumbing locations and then once you have corroded lines that we noticed in the kitchen pretty much when galvanized plumbing starts to go out it starts to go out everywhere so you can get a quote for a repair in that area but really if you're looking to purchase in a property you just want to get a quote to replace all the galvanized water lines in the entire property because it's not going to stop failing in uh throughout the property once galvanized starts going it's it's the whole system is starting to comp comp is compromised so as uh we're walking around in here it is pretty warm you can feel the heat radiating um, uh, aside from this added conversion I mean the rest of the house as well considering the age there's a good chance that there's actually not any insulation in the walls at all so when we go through with our thermal camera um, at the end here not only are we going to look for water leaks but we'll also look for missing insulation um, and we can tell that if there's none, we won't see like individual pieces missing, but we'll be able to tell by the temperature readings that we're getting from the walls. This is going to be an electric unit. We do not have a service disconnect to shut off the furnace. Um, another thing too, just so it is going to be on R22 Freon, the older Freon that we're phasing out. So. I will inform the client about that because if they need to have any charging done, it is going to cost quite a bit more. Um, there is a lot of microbial growth on the outside of the unit here. Um, this could be for any number of reasons. It's a common thing to see, but there is quite a bit on this one, so I will be noting that. And so looking down at the floor of the attic in here, there, there is no insulation in place 
for the floor here. Probably going to be an indicator too that there's not any in the walls, but that will be to, to be determined later. Um, and this older age ductwork in the back, you have some deterioration on the coverings for the insulation. And then just due to the age as well, it's not going to be as efficient as modern duct work. So you will get some heating or cooling loss there and we'll make sure to inform the client about that. Okay, so when we're talking about these older properties and when he's talking about air leakage, older duct work, missing insulation, and we have microbial growth, there's something to know about this location. This is a million dollar property. So whenever we're describing these problems, we wanna make sure our client understands that this isn't these aren't small things you're you have mold throughout the property you have you're gonna have breathing problems if you live in here so you're, this is something this isn't small stuff this is this is a pretty big deal this is a, this is a big deal so um whenever you're trying to buy these older properties make sure that you know that you're coming in to things that are not going to be modern things are going to be broken and yeah you know just expect problems oh man check out this crack oh my yeah. goodness yeah the it's locked yeah it is hope we can make it in the button didn't work inside we were talking about the foundation movement on the interior of the property you can see the crack through the slab you can see some previous foundation work though but you have the the garage is pulling away from the structure this is obviously an add-on at some point in time. That's a pretty intense counter flash yeah. in there. <laughs> <laughs> Something must have really happened that made the homeowner mad. All right, so we got our main water shut off. It's coming out from the, the crawl space right here. Now, all these exterior plumbing supply lines, we do want to insulate those to protect them from freeze damage. Now, we don't get really bad freezes here compared to up north, but these uh, last couple years, the freezes we've had have caused a lot of damage to um, homes that are equipped with galvanized and copper supply pipes. So um, if we can help our clients avoid that situation, I'm sure everyone would appreciate that. We do have some cracking in the mortar over here and it is following in a step pattern there. Now, um, some of this mortar cracking is going to be due to this home not having any sort of expansion joints to expand and contract on um, but really what we are looking for is going to be is one side of the crack pulling one way and the other side pulling the other giving us signs of deflection here which would just tie back into our foundation indicators that we're looking for yeah so we're on the east side of the structure or the back side of the structure we can see that we have an additional add-on over here. There's a lot going on wrong here. Uh, so let's just start from the top and work our way down. So right here where we have this, this roof transition where it ends into the wall and the wall continues here, you need some sort of kick out flashing. And kick out flashing is important because walls, water is going to run off this roof structure and then run down this wall and it's gonna rot out the entire wall. It's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when uh, everything on this wall needs to be replaced. Next, coming down, you from the settlement in the house or on this new addition, you could see that it's separating and there is a gap from top to bottom that they've used, tried to caulk it, I guess, and added in mesh wiring. Not, not adequate, it, that just won't work. And then we also have, it appears to be grading issues we have high high grading all throughout the structure and you we can even see down into the floor over here so anytime it rains they're going to get water in that room period so you have water from coming from the top and bottom on this property and this is what a a million dollars buys you in a yeah the the west west university um, we also like to point out whenever there's vinyl siding present, um, you know, a, a regular home buyer may not put two and two together on what may or may not be present behind here. Um, we do find some instances where the original wood siding is present behind here and there's tons of termite damage or things like that. Or sometimes there's actually nothing behind it at all. 
Um, so we do like to point that out to them, you know, just in case there's anything behind there because we're not able to pull this back and, and yeah. see behind. Yeah, what, we're, what he's saying is we're just not Superman. We can't see behind the, yeah. we can't see <laughs> behind the siding. And so we have high, we have water, we have high soil, we have areas that we can't see behind, and uh, it's it's a very prominent area, an easy area that you can get termites, and they could go undiscovered for a very long time. We might be able to see signs from them on the inside, but sometimes you can't find anything. So with that water stain that we saw on the inside, I ran out of time, but I ended up leaving the property. It's coming from our balcony here, in between the door, so. You can see this balcony is more or less flat. It's not sloped away and they don't have it flashed properly on the, on the, against the wall. And so we're getting water leaks on the inside of the property and we got water leaks everywhere. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Let's go to the next problem. Okay, coming around to the other side of the property, we have two newer HVAC units. One's a 2016 and one's a 2014. Both are requiring R4 10 Freon. So in the attic space, we have a unit requiring R22 and outside we have an R410. So these units are not compatible. They don't meet manufacturer standards. So if anything goes wrong, nobody's gonna cover anything and it will ultimately fail pretty quick. And then right here, this is kind of a funny find. We have a, uh, a dryer exhaust that's not, point, it's not pointing down, it's pointing up. So anytime it rains, it's just water's just pouring in there and going inside so we have all kinds of leakage on this structure okay heading into the crawl space typically in most cases you always want some sort of crawl suit mask uh, screwdriver I didn't bring any of that today but I really want to go over there and look underneath uh, the uh, the kitchen so I can show you those spots but there's a there's a few th uh, safety precautions you whenever you're in a crawl space make sure you're never getting in any water don't make make sure that there's no low electrical lines or anything like that and if you do see stuff like that just get out you know just stop so let's get a little dirty and uh, get inside do a little pre-scan see what i'm getting into <laughs> the ducks like all separated and stuff underneath there Ooh. okay it smells down here, but lot, lots of stuff. Um, all the duct work, all the metal duct work is separated and all the insulation's gone. It's really cold down here, so we're, we're cooling the, the crawl space. We have a lot of rot underneath the kitchen. I mean, the floor is completely gone. We also have cast iron plumbing. We have galvanized water lines that are corroded and it appears to be leaking. I'm not seeing any water drips, but really the floor is gone from wherever I saw over here. On a positive note, it is really dry down here, but uh, you can see where water rushes through this crawl space and it's eroded away the base of all these, these piers. Oh, looks like we got a disconnected, uh, gas line over there too so I got all of that within like two feet of the crawl space whenever you're in we're inspecting something like this yes we're gonna find a lot of issues the biggest thing that you always want to do when you're inspecting something like this is to figure out what your clients expectations are for the property before you try to explain and show them absolutely everything uh, so we, what we do is we always pull the client to the side be like hey you know what are your major concerns you know what are we working out here and then and then kind of break down the property that way. really when it comes down to living in older properties the your your major concerns are going to be anything that's going to cause health issues so in my in my opinion the there's three major things on this property. Yes, there's stuff all over the place, but anything where water is entering the property needs to be addressed immediately. So all the leaks that we found or in the property separating in those locations needs to be sealed up. Two, the, uh, the plumbing. I mean, you have water leaking into the kitchen. You have water leaking underneath the kitchen. You have water leaking from the plumbing lines, all health concerns. And then uh, the, the air system. You're not getting proper airflow to this property. So if you, 
they move in and they don't fix any of these issues, they will have health issues moving into the home. This isn't just like, hey, we can move in and fix this stuff as we go. They, they'll move in and there's a very good chance they could get sick. So it's important that as an inspector that when we find these items, we don't just tell them that they exist, but also let them know what would happen if they don't uh, fix these items, uh, what, could what, what issues could have come of it. So yeah, so that's Chris with Day Action. I did my best to record videos around this one. These older ones are really hard to translate what we see and find. So uh, yeah, that's Chris with Day Action. Catch us on the next one. Thanks guys, bye.